Around 1000 BCE, indigenous Kentuckians underwent several distinct cultural changes which we can see in the archaeological record. They began practicing horticulture with native cultigens, developed pottery to cook and store food, and began constructing mounds and earthworks for both burying the dead and conducting community rituals. These changes mark a period of time called the Early Woodland Period. In this video, I replicate a style of stone projectile point from this era and discuss Early Woodland Period archaeology in Kentucky. I selected a piece of St. Genevieve Chert, a common type of flint used by people throughout Kentucky's prehistory. Using a hammer stone and an antler billet, I strike off pieces of flint, called flakes, to start shaping and thinning it. My goal will be to create a projectile point with a straight-sided stem, which will be hafted to a spear or handle. A number of similar styles of projectile points during this time period shared this general form, and are called names like Adena, Kramer, Cressup, and more. Removing flakes of flint from both sides, I create what is called a biface. In Kentucky, the early woodland period begins around 1000 BCE and ends around 200 BCE, although these dates vary across the regions of the state. Pottery is one of the major changes in technology used to mark the beginning of this period, and the adoption of this technology also varies between regions. The earliest use started in the eastern and central regions, and spread west. These early styles of pottery were tempered with grit and rocks, exhibiting decorations like cord marking and fabric impressions on the exterior surfaces. Fayette Thick is one of the pottery styles from this period, which included large barrel-shaped vessels and deep basin-shaped jars or cauldrons. One likely reason pottery was adopted was its usefulness in cooking food, particularly starchy and oily seeds from early woodland period crops. While plant domestication began in the preceding late archaic period, the widespread, intense use of these plants is a trait of the woodland period. These cultivated plants include pebble squash, sunflower, marsh elder, canopod, goosefoot, knotweed, maygrass, and little barley. Collectively, these plants are referred to as the Eastern Agricultural Complex. Early woodland Kentuckians continued to forage for wild plant foods as well. Tree nuts, especially hickory, were important sources of food, and it was stored in large quantities for year-round use. Wild fruits and berries were some other important plant foods for them. As I flitten out this biface further, it can be used as a tool itself, before being completely finished. Many of the first flakes I struck off could be made into other tools, or used as is as cutting implements. Many prehistoric archaeological sites can be identified from these flint flakes, which were left on the ground. However, at even more complicated early woodland sites like mounds, flakes are still one of the most common artifacts that are found. Large Adena projectile points like the size that I am making were likely used as knives, with the more average examples being used as tips for hunting implements. The Atlatl, or spear thrower, was the weapon of choice for hunting medium and large game, such as deer, elk, bear, turkey, and more. Other stone tools early woodland people made include scrapers, drills, graving tools, and axes. One change from previous time periods in the lithic technology during this period is the use of an axe style called a celt. Whether flint napped or made from tougher stone with other techniques, these celts taper in height back from the cutting edge, fitting into a handle on the principle of a wedge. Another change in stone tool technology during Kentucky's early woodland period is that people stopped using stone edge scrapers for tanning hides. Instead, they replaced these with bone beamers, which continued in use throughout the rest of prehistory in the state. One feature of the early woodland period left a much more visible impact on the archaeological record than all of the others, the construction of earthen mounds and earthworks. Mound building is associated with a cultural phenomenon called Adena, which occurred throughout a large area of the eastern North American region. 
Along with the spread of mound building practices, Adena involved the long distance exchange of exotic goods made of copper, marine shell, and much more. Mound constructions in Kentucky range from less than a meter tall to large examples over nine meters in height, like Wright Mound. An important, if not primary, function of these mounds was for burying the dead and associated burial practices. The dead were often buried with extensive grave goods, both common everyday items and exotic goods obtained through exchange networks. The graves in the mounds have multiple styles, including stone or log-lined tombs, clay bottom basins, and pits lined with bark. In some burials, often those with log tombs, the grave was left open so the deceased could be accessed and remain viewable by the living until they were deemed ready for the next stage of the mortuary process. Some earthworks were not burial sites, although all mounds and earthworks served as social aggregation spaces for intercommunity rituals. Those particularly made for communal practices had circular embankments with interior ditches, level interior surfaces, and a raised causeway between the exterior and interior of the earthwork. Once my biface is as thin as I want it and nearly the right shape, I put down the antler billet and use a different technique. Pressing an antler tool into and downward on the edge, I pop off a small flake on the underside of the biface. This technique is called pressure flaking. Pressure flaking will help me shape the biface in a controlled manner and straighten the edge. Now it is time for me to finish the projectile point by giving it a stem. A stem is the area near the base that allows it to be fastened to either a spear shaft or a knife handle, while also protecting the lashings which will hold it in place. The shape of the stem for this point is modeled specifically after points from the early woodland period. When I'm finished with the stem, all that will be left is to sharpen the edge. While early woodland people returned to specific locations for reuse, they were still fairly mobile. They moved between base camps and small villages located in river valleys and uplands. Rock shelters saw a lot of use as base camps during this period, as these rock overhangs provided natural shelter. Early woodland rock shelter and cave sites often lead to incredible preservation, including artifacts of perishable materials. Objects from plant materials including footwear, pouches, baskets, sleeping mats, torches, and more have been found at cave and rock shelter sites. Horticulture, pottery, and mound building are three distinct ways early woodland people left an impression on Kentucky's archaeological record. Their domesticated plants show that they were innovating new ways of producing food, and pottery allowed them to extract more nutrients from it, as well as storing it long term. Mounds and earthworks show that early woodland people were practicing new ideas regarding the dead, which were shared with both their neighbors and people hundreds of miles away. While their descendants continued this practice for hundreds of years, earthworks and mounds were truly how early woodland people left their mark on the Kentucky landscape in a way that persists even to today.